This is NDDC Today. Hello and welcome. As you all know, development is a collective effort. The Niger Delta Regional Development Master Plan places a high premium on stakeholder partnerships. On the program today, we celebrate the success of one of such partnerships. If you've never lived on an island or riverine area that were completely inaccessible by road, you may never appreciate the plight of the people in these areas, especially when it comes to movement of goods and services to other places, which is now only possible by canoes and boats. The 25.7 kilometer of Guanembe Road and Bridges project in Bielsa State, executed by the NDDC and Shell, was started, would you believe it, a decade ago. And it's one project that has, for the very first time, connected the 14 communities along its stretch to a motorable road. Here's a special feature on the all important Guanembe Road. President Roosevelt was wont to say after the war, Give me a country well connected, and I will give you a buoyant economy. Roosevelt frog leapt the development of America after the war by simply building more roads. Roads provide and ease human communication, and everything else follows. Wisening up to this fact, since its inception, the NDDC has built hundreds of roads all over the Niger Delta. As we speak, many mega road projects are in progress. But for relevance and incisiveness, none can beat the Ogbianembe Road Project. Nembe, the Asian city-state, seen from the air, displays all its breathtaking beauty and splendor, like a jaw in the creeks. Nembe, whose rump hugs the salty waters of the Atlantic Ocean, is the terminal point of the Ogbianembe Road, and is probably the greatest beneficiary of the project. Until now, it was completely cut off from the advancing civilization. To get from here to Yenagua or Port Harcourt, you took a flying boat of three hours fraught with many captizers, or you took this ferry that took 10 hours to get to Port Harcourt. Now that trip upland takes barely 20 minutes. Yet all you see here was built when there were no roads. Even the contents of the old bridge linking Ogulumabri Abasambiri, built with bars and concrete, came here entirely by boat, barges, or canoes. The new bridge shines under from beyond, a bristling new generation. 27 kilometers across the jungle swamp upland is Ogbeat local government. Home of Eloy Biri. The home of the first Christmas tree, a term used for the end of the flow stations by which crude oil is pumped to tank farms. In 1956, this was a huge novelty to Ogbia community. Many didn't know what it was. Most saw it 
as another of those structures of European technological presence. They didn't know that through this and others like it, millions of barrels of our new wealth found on their soil would flow to nourish a Nigerian economy which at that time was unsure of its mainstay. Those who built this oil head 60 years ago never envisaged the economic, social, political revolution they were given rise to in the Niger Delta, a revolution which spawned awareness, then agitation, then equity, then the NDDC. It was only fitting, therefore, that the NDDC would honor its origins by honoring Eloy Berry with exposure. It would be the starting point of one of the most significant road projects ever undertaken by the NDDC. The strategic Ogbianembe Road and Bridges Project deserves for all intents and purposes the tag of a mega project which is probably why it has taken decades to become a reality. The people of this area have been agitating for the construction of the road that would link the 14 communities along the axis and open them to development. These communities had never before been connected to a road network and their only option of transport was by boats and canoes on the creeks and rivers that crisscross the area to connect the rest of the state. We move from one place to the other and before we get to Yenegua, from one speedboat to the other, we transfer our speedboat from one place to the other before we get to Yenegua. And I and uh, I'm um, this in uh, K and other you know other means of going that least you find we very everything very difficult to reach anywhere. Despite the pledge of various past administrations to actualize the project, the greatest impediment was the huge cost implication occasioned by the forbidden terrain, which is entirely virgin mangrove swamp forest. Then, in 2005, the Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC and Shell Petroleum Development Company SBDC entered into a joint venture partnership agreement, sealed with the signing of an MOU with the sole objective of executing and delivering the Ogbia Nembe Road and Bridges project. For the financing of the project, it was agreed by both parties that Shell contributes 70% of the cost, while NDDC contributes the remaining 30% in addition to the management and supervision of the project. And as with all its major projects, the NDDC had to conduct an environmental impact assessment exercise. This project is a very, very important project because it's going to open up an area that is extremely very difficult to reach. People think that some of these projects are too difficult to embark on, on that partnership. But if we all put our minds to it and we're committed and stick to the tenets of the partnership, it will be done. But the NDDC SPDC partnership on this project is a model that governments and agencies should you know, look up to and apply it is a putting sustainable projects in the country. There are a total of 53 culverts and seven reinforced concrete bridges of various lengths, the longest of which is the 120 meter long bridge across the Agib Canal, which is the star of the project. The gigantuan dimension of the project is evidenced by the 2.5 million square meters of sharp sand used for embankment filling of the entire stretch of the road. The contract was awarded to Cetraco in 2005 for an initial sum of 9.6 billion naira, which was reviewed upwards over the years to the final contract sum of 24 billion naira. The contractor mobilized the site in February 2006 
but shortly after work started on the project, the contractor had to demobilize from site due to the activities of militants in the area. Apart from insecurity, community issues, revision of the project scope and design due to geotechnical considerations, the difficult terrain and short dry season spells were the other issues which slowed down work on the project. As of today, all those challenges have been overcome and the project is 98% complete. Asphalting of the road has reached Basambiri. All the seven bridges have been completed, including the last bridge to Nembe City, and vehicles drive smoothly on the road from Ogbia to Nembe in about 20 minutes or less. As the contractor puts finishing touches to the project for completion and handover, this totally virgin swampy mangrove forest in the heart of the Niger Delta is showcasing a first-class road comparable with any such project anywhere in Nigeria. But how is the road impacting on the socio-economic lives of the communities along its axis? We went to some of the communities to find out. In Nembe, the chiefs and elders in youth are in complete agreement regarding the positive impact of the road and how this has changed the social and economic life of the people here. This road will bring a commercial activities into this community greatly. Even, even as of now, we are trying to see that uh, people from uh, upland areas, the houses, the Ibos, are coming into the community just to sell, trade with the commun uh, community members. This road, up, uh, even now, it has boosted the economy of the place. You know, when there is road, you know that things improve. You see traders coming in freely and others going out like that. And the transportation, the, the period we are flying this speedboat and so on, there are a lot of uh, accidents. Uh, accidents. And uh, the accidents are now minimized because of this road. Hey, downstairs here, yeah, if you take it to places like uh, Yenagua or Potakot, that is the equivalent to an upstairs because the, the, the means of ferrying our um, cement, shippings, and building material, etc. You know they are very, very expensive. But today, with the help of this road, which NDDC and Shell have brought to Nimbe, it makes everything easy, easier for us. The economic benefits of this all-important road are visible almost everywhere in Nimbe, even as the Ogboluma Biri Square of 1.5 kilometers had been stone-based awaiting asphalting up to the Nembe City Bridge, there are those who make comparisons between the safety of traveling now on the road to what obtained on the creeks and rivers before the road. Number one, most of the engine boats were very old and uh, rusty, smoking. By the time you finish traveling and come back, you go to the hospital to take drugs for Qatar and other things. But the most dangerous one, the militants. The sea pirates. Most times they even seize our engine boat and we have to paddle to the nearest anchor. And so that particular day wasted because most of the places they catch us are the places we don't have network and those kind of things. You are traveling with your heart in your hand. But today look at us standing confidently along the road because of what God has done for us. Because of the grace, whoever that is in charge, God will bless them because as I today, as I speak to you, we are relaxed. We can travel at will. And then the joy of being integrated to the mainland can never be quantified. Akipelai is a major community along the Ogbianembe Road. In recognition of this fact, a spur of 850 meters 
leads from the road's main alignment right into the community for easy accessibility. Here too, the people are predominantly fishermen and farmers. Akipelai is a peaceful and serene community where people's social and economic lives have blossomed as a result of the NDDC-SPDC mega road project. More so, as like other communities along the road, they are being connected to a road network for the very first time. Today is uh, just as if the, the, the globe is a village. You can just run straight and come back within some few hours or minutes back home because of the road that is newly constructed. These roads were the long expected road right from the 60s. We carry loads on our heads. Right from Ogbea town, uh, boat, boat will drop us from the Ogbea uh, waterfront. Then we carry these things on our head. Enter up my backyard. Then from there we trek to this community on a track road. A very suffering road. There is no way to even mention the type of challenges that we have that time. But because of this joint venture we are enjoying today. But I am praying that we need more herbal. Emakalakala is a community located about 7 kilometers from the starting point of the road in Ogbia and is close to Agib Canal which has the longest bridge on the Ogbia Nembe Road. Emakalakala is off the main alignment of the road and because of this has a spur of 3.6 kilometers with a bridge connecting the project. Expectedly, the people of this river and community are mostly fishermen and traders. Before the road was built, Emakalakala waterside used to be a bustling environment, as it was the takeoff point for engine boats taking people to Nembe. Today, the story is completely different. Where I am standing now is the jetty in Makalakala. Before this area, the Nembe people we are using here as a transport center to go to their community. We normally load over 50 boats a day here, load passengers from here to Nembe. But because of the road now leading to Nembe, the boats now no passenger for them. Most people now are using the, their vehicles from Yenagua straight to Nimbe. That is why you see this place scanty. The engine boat may have gone, but what the town has lost in the water transport business does more than gained in being connected to a first class road with its attendant socio economic benefits for the people. When there was, there was no uh, road, we find it very uh, difficult because we pass uh, through uh, huts before you were reaching here, like say for example, Portacord to uh, Makalakala. I think we spend uh, some number of hours before reaching here. But uh, today, being that that is a uh, linkage of road, I think uh, we spend less less hours or less hours from Portacord to uh, Makalakala or from Yinagua to uh, Makalakala or uh, Ogbea. Now that is road. We are feeling happy to travel from here to Yenangua, here to Portacourt. Before we used to join boats, two days we are on the sea, going to Portacourt. The boat we cover side, people we lost. But now that mot uh, motorable road don't come out, we are happy to travel to Portacourt, Yenangua everywhere. Opune is the first community close to the starting point of the road at Ogbea. Because of this vantage position, 
Upume Junction is a beehive of activity for motorists, commercial motorcyclists, popularly called Okada, vulcanizers, food sellers, among others. A 1.4 km spur with a bridge leads from the junction to Upume Town, with asphalting of the spur yet to be completed. The Upume people are also mainly into fishing, farming and trading. The road has not only opened their community to the outside world, but has enhanced business activities and people from other parts of the country who have come here. I come from Zaria. I do my endowment business center for, for, for my dungeon. Because of the road, when people they come, they enter from the enter bike come, enter motor go and go for here. Before we've been the sofa. Now as I go market come. I from my village to come market, very easy. I to come buy something to go. They'll try. Government tries. I'm very happy to see this road. I pray to God for God to grant those who award this road. May God give them long life to do more things, more than this. The challenge of this road, there's no way to move. You, ca you can't even carry two people at once. You can only manage with one person with sufferance. But for now, you can even load as much as, as your bike can contain. So okay. that's the happiness. We pass through the river where we put them in the local boats and we spend a lot of money. And it's very dangerous. When the bad boys came, they would take away all your goods, they would kidnap people and you spend money there and it is very very you know difficult for us to transfer our goods down there but now it's very easy for us to pass through the road to assess our town they are very happy this road the business is the kerosene fuel especially the people are dealing by this mineral sources and the, they are benefit the road the boats all the sizes the acting managing director, CEO of the NDDC, Mrs. Ibim Semenitari, accompanied by directors, was recently on a project assessment tour of Bayelsa State and came calling at the Ogbea Nembe project site to see things for herself. Expressing satisfaction for the job done so far by the contractor, she disclosed that the commission had a greater vision for the development of road infrastructure in the area. The fact that NDDC partnered with SPDC is the reason we've been able to drive this project this far. So we want to commend SPDC very much for what it's done in working with the NDDC to deliver on this project. We, we think it makes sense to commend this contractor. When contractors do not do well, we normally complain. When they do well, they deserve to be commended. I recall that when I resumed, this project was... Um, kind of stalled and a meeting with the contractor and an assurance even before we were able to make the first payment this contractor came back to site and we think that that is very commendable. We've been very clear that to achieve the kind of development we want, to achieve the kind of growth in society you have to look for partners who are willing to collaborate with you. No one party can do it all. If government cannot do it alone then you know <laughs> You can imagine what it is for a business concern like ourselves, no matter how big you are, to think about helping to develop the Niger Delta. It's a very, very big task and you can only achieve more when you can find willing and strong partners that can work with you to deliver. MDC has been a fantastic partner in the sense that um, even in situations where we had difficulty in funding, MDC was able to step in to get the work continued. We were able to have a continuous work without serious interruption. So from that viewpoint, uh, they were very understanding. And apart from the financial side, they've been able to provide the, the logistics and the support that it required. That at the end of the day, the effort we need to put in, in place in Shell is not as enormous as we have expected to do. So between the two of us, we have been able to pull our resources together and our strengths and weaknesses have been has come to play in quite such a way that the weaknesses are, are not really shown because of the strength we put together and to the point that we're able to actually deliver this project successfully. I think if people look at the video, if you look at that area, look at what it was before and now, 
it's a substantial, substantial improvement in what you see. And we hope that uh, this will be the beginning of, um, of, of commerce, of development in the area. If you follow the history of this country, you will find that a lot of that history is buried in the bellies of Nembe and Brax. And um, quite often we don't remember that. The commercial activities um, of this country, uh, of this region, were buried in the bellies of these of this ancient kingdoms and ancient uh, oil states, oil city states. So it's important that we connect them. One, so that we can get back a bit of our history, but more importantly, so that we can tap from the benefits, the commercial benefits of these communities. Um, they, that artist provides the best place for a deep sea port, for instance. Uh, and so we're losing out the benefit of that because we don't have access to the place. So can you imagine if we have access and then you have that deep sea port? And think about the economic activities that will go on around there. So indeed, Nigeria stands to benefit quite a bit by the completion of these roads. As the Ogbianembe Road and Bridges Project approaches the completion stage, the NDDC SPDC joint venture partnership that delivered the road has demonstrated not only a great engineering feat by conquering the swamps in the heart of the Niger Delta for this mega road showpiece, but has succeeded where no one else dared before now. It will stand as a lasting testimony to the power of partnerships in regional development and is a harbinger of greater things to come. To some, the Ogbenembe Road might just be that, a road. But in essence, in providing this road, the NDDC and SPDC have woken up a huge giant, until now all bottled up in the creeks. The giant of the great and temporal spirit of the people waiting to break loose. Now, Nigeria must look out. There is a new kid in the block. With that special news feature on the Ogbianembe Road and Bridges Project, we draw the curtain on our package for today. Join us again next time when we bring you more about the development intervention initiatives of the NDDC. Until then, you can reach us on the number and address showing on your screen for comments, questions, and even your reactions. On behalf of the entire crew, I am Patrick Oke saying thanks for watching. Bye for now.